Second skill is, second professional skill is analysis and evaluation. Remember, we are discussing this in the context of advanced financial management. And you know well, this paper includes a lot of calculation. Obviously, in every call calculation requires a detailed analysis and evaluation. And in AFM, you are performing different calculation using different methods, using free cash flow methods, using NPV analysis, IR analysis, MRR analysis. And after the end of every calculation, you need to analyze the result. It is key to remember that in AFM, any analysis or evaluation should be contextual and must consider the situation in which the business is operating. If the NPV or APV is positive, it doesn't mean you will give the same general analysis in every question. Analysis depends upon the company uh, which is which you are evaluating in a given scenario. So it depends upon the scenario that how you will uh, evaluate. Analysis and evaluation will be tested in almost every question and you must interpret the numerical result with logical argument using a, using a variety of sources of information. Remember, in AFM, it is must that you should analyze every calculation. If you are doing NPV question, you should analyze the result. If you are doing free cash flow calculation and you are calculating the market value, you should analyze the result. If you are doing the risk management question and you have solved your question using forward, future and options, you should analyze the result of your calculation. Otherwise, you will lose some valuable marks. So, evaluation should be done at the end of every calculation, whether you are doing the investor appraisal, business valuation or the risk management question. And evaluation should be performed using professional judgment when considering issues, problem or decision faced by the company. In evaluation, you must predict the future consequence of the decision you are taking. For example, if you are evaluating the investment appraisal project, you have to write in your analysis that what is going to happen in the future. For example, if you are opening a new factory, if you are uh, producing a new product, in future you can expand that factory and in future you can launch a new project, you can also write that. Before making an overall recommendation, you should appraise all facts, assess all opinions and finding and create a balanced approach. Balanced approach means Whenever there is a word evaluate the answer, you will write the pros and cons. You will write the advantage and disadvantage. You will consider the benefit. At the same time, you will also consider the cost and risk and opportunity of that particular scenario. Remember, you will consider the cost and benefit. You will consider the risk and opportunity of that particular scenario. The number one step is to perform a relevant calculation. After doing the calculation, then you will do the analysis. So for example, for example, you want to write a report to the board of directors and there's a scenario of acceptability of international investment appraisal. There's a scenario that there's a case of international investment appraisal and you have to write the report to the board of directors. Number one step, perform the calculation whether it is APV, whether it is NPV, perform the calculation in full detail using the spreadsheet functionality. Now ready to discuss the result. If the NPV is positive or negative, you have to write, you have to comment and identify any uh, major variables that if that, if those variable change, what will be the impact on your result? For example, if, if there is a if there is a case of tax, if there is a case of selling price, if there is a case of government change, identify the key variables and assess, write the impact of those variables if those variables change on your result. Discuss if there is any financial factor you have not included in the calculation. For example, you have performed the calculation, but there was 
there was some missing financial factor because it was not given in the scenario. Right there, if that variable uh, were present, what will be the impact of that? For example, tax holiday, for example, the impact of government subsidized loan. Discuss the impact of the non-financial factor on the result. For example, if there is a if there is a case of government change, political factor, ethical issue, technological change, competitor's point. If competitors enter, in, enter into the business, what will happen? So you can discuss pastel of quarter five courses previous knowledge. You can use that knowledge and write this non-financial factor. I'm not saying apply the pest analysis. It is not part of slavers. Not saying apply the four or five forces, not part of slavers. But obviously having the knowledge of four or five forces, pest analysis, you can identify the non-financial factor. It is. It will be easy for you. You should also discuss the downside of the investment. If you are starting a new project, how you will arrange the funds? What will be the financing risk? If you are starting a new project in other country, what will be the overseas risk? What will be the country risk premium? You are starting a new project. For example, you are starting a new project in, in other country, which is going to default, which is going to be in financial trouble. You will not get back your money. You can write those risks. Identify where data appears to be omitted. Identify the scenario. If there, if there is a there is some data which is omitted, you can write. Further analysis is needed to make the recommendation uh, more, uh, you can say, clear. So you can say that a full evaluation cannot be performed because of the lack of data. This is a professional word. You can write that in the report. You should, you should also in investigate scenarios for other specific scenario related cases. If there are some other issues available in the in the case, in the scenario, you can also discuss those. Now make a recommendation on whether you should proceed with the project or not. Summary. If you want to evaluate the proposal, number one step is perform, identify the information in the scenario, perform the calculation. Information means every information which has an impact on the company. Now produce a balance argument, considering pros and cons, considering advantage and disadvantage and considering both side of the argument, positive side and the negative side. Whenever there is a word evaluate the scenario, remember you have to discuss by writing, your, by writing the pros and cons. For example, if you are doing the risk management question and you have performed the calculation of forward, future and option, most suitable answer is forward but while discussing your result, you have to you have to discuss by writing the advantage and disadvantage of forward, advantage and disadvantage of future and option. You have to compare all. Then at the end, you will give the conclusion, the logical conclusion, obviously depending upon the scenario of the question. So that's how you will perform the analysis and evaluation and you will get the full marks by following all these steps.